When we think of extremely rare fish, we think of isolated caves, distant springs, and hidden valleys. But what if a fish, so rare the local government doesn't even know it's there, was living in a golf course pond? Hi, I'm Avian J. I'm a fish biologist and lover of native fishes. And a few months ago, after catching and documenting every freshwater fish that New Jersey had to offer, I found myself lost with what to do next. One night, I was looking at a document published by the New Jersey government. In it, professionals and experts from all different careers and expertises commented on the local fish of New Jersey. Take for example, the iron color shiner, New Jersey's rarest minnow. All of these experts unsurprisingly stated that the fish was, in fact, quite rare. But one fish caught my eye, the Allegheny Pearl Dace. The consensus was clear and unwavering, extirpated, extirpated, extirpated. According to every expert, this fish was locally extinct. How recently? No one is sure, but there hadn't been a confirmed sighting since the 1960s. So I did some digging. I checked historical records, read through old field guides, and created a master list of places that this fish could theoretically still be thriving. I had one goal, prove everybody wrong, and find a fish that no one thought was even around anymore. And then, after months of searching, 15 plus streams that I went, fished, and checked completely, I did. This is a pearl dace, caught within New Jersey. Every expert was wrong. But can you blame them? See, I didn't find this fish in a pristine woodland creek, nor in a hidden valley, but here, in a golf course pond. Look, I know this sounds ridiculous. Dozens of experts, scientists, and researchers, yet no evidence of this fish for 60 years. And I, I get that you might not believe me, so let me show you. This pond was formed somewhere around 1966, when Gerald C. Roby demanded water hazards for his new golf course, and thus the local creek was dammed. Shimer's Brook, as it would come to be known, forms only a few miles above the golf course, and empties into the Delaware River only a few miles below. All in all, it's a pretty tiny, insignificant headwater body. And with the West's fascination with dam building at the time, it's no surprise that no one bothered to check what was going on in these waters in the first place. But what is surprising about this discovery is that Shimer's Brook is actually a studied and sampled water body nowadays. The area below the dams is electrofished every five years by the NJDEP. And in all the time that they've been doing it, they have not caught, or at least noticed, a pearl dace. This makes the story even stranger. Assuming that the pearl dace are living in all five disjuncted ponds in the golf course, that makes the range go from here to here. To put it in perspective, here's what that looks like within the full map of New Jersey. This is, without a doubt, ridiculous. I don't think any expert can be blamed for not predicting this or not checking. How does a fish sensitive enough to be wiped out in this state everywhere else thrive in a golf course pond? Pearl dace have a strong preference to crystal clear water, as they are sight hunters first and foremost. Without properly clear water, they can't find food. They also like a sandy substrate to camouflage into and conduct their mating upon. Finally, they need cold water as their range of tolerated temperatures is quite small compared to other local minnows. 
While these sound like easy enough requirements, the state of New Jersey has been on a quest since the early 20th century to eliminate these environments as a whole. See, the construction of dams slows water bodies down, allowing them more time in the sun to gain energy and heat, thus raising the water temperature. Dams also pile up debris and substrate, creating murky water with a muddy bottom. When you consider how counter dams are to everything a Pearl Dace needs to survive, it's no surprise that their local extinction coincides with a time where New Jersey was building dams at an unprecedented rate. You might hear all of this and reasonably think, but, but wait, you didn't find these fish far away from the influence of dams. In fact, the spot where I found these fish has dams here, here, and here. So how is it possible that the last holdout of such an intolerant fish is an area with such great human influence? I don't know. From everything I can find out, it seems like a product of coincidence more than anything else. But what I do know is that these fish are as imperiled as it gets. The golf course is private property, and I can't legally catch fish there. I have no idea how many they are, how many there are left in the population, exactly where the population is, whether it's sustaining itself. Is the number going up? Is the number going down? Are they breeding properly? I don't know. The golf course is private property. I I've searched the streams above and below the golf course extensively, and I found no evidence of pearl dace in either of them. No evidence of anything that could even sustain a pearl dace in either of them, just tons of large predators and muddy bottoms. Meaning, their entire population is restricted to, at maximum, three private golf course ponds. And of those three, I've only found them in one. Meaning there is a chance that there is one singular pond, which, by the way, is about the size of a normal family home, not very large, sustaining their entire population. So what do we do now? Well, I reached out to the local government, as any normal person would do, talked to a biologist there, and sent them some of the photos and the documentation of the fact that there may be pearl dace in this pond, and they told me that they would get back to me. They have not done that, but that's okay. I also reached out to the golf course. The golf course did, in fact, say that the local government had reached out to them at one point, um, but they weren't sure if anything was being done, and they didn't feel like anything could be done on their end. So. I'm doing what I do best as a content creator and raising awareness. Pearl Dace are awesome, and it is an absolute miracle that we somehow did not manage to make them all go away with our crazy dam building throughout the 20th century. It's just incredible that they managed to survive through that. It would be such a shame to waste their survivability and the fact that they're living in New Jersey still. Despite all of the things we put them through, it would be such a waste to have them go extinct for real this time. So, pay attention to Pearl Dace, give them the support that they need, protect them, and encourage people to protect them. Thank you.